And here we have, on the left, England and Wales, and on the right, UK, Northern Ireland, both uh, on the same vertical scale, the uh, 250 deaths per million line is lined up. Uh, we see that England was really quite badly hit in the first wave. Again, going back to New York, I think it is slightly more than 100%. So uh, on week 17, England, uh, the high point is something like 330 and the baseline 150. So 330 divided by 150 is over twice. So the high point is twice the average in New York. Uh, as a whole, it was five times New York State. So again, not the same. Um, a relatively small number of younger people, say, compared to what we were seeing in the uh, United States. And then quite a modest uh, second wave. Um, it's also important to see that there's actually an undershoot. If you look at the number of, uh, or pull forward, the number of excess deaths in the summer, weeks 23 to 33, are actually negative. So some of the people who died in the main wave are not dying subsequently. Um, but essentially, one main wave, I think I would guess that the total number of deaths in the second wave is certainly less than the first wave. The total number of both waves and both ages is around 1,300, the same number that we saw in, in California and in Florida. So this, these, are highly, these are badly hit countries. The average is uh, less than uh, 1,000 per million. So that's the case. And Northern Ireland, uh, on the same scale, uh, is definitely less. The sum of the uh, excess deaths per million is uh, closer to 700, about half. Um, again, you can see it's a much smaller population. It's much more noisy. Um, something in the second wave, but again, um, nothing that's really surprising. And again, very little excess death for people under 65, just 165 per million. Yeah. And, you know, my comments there are certainly I got a lot of heat about the second wave in England being bigger than we had expected. But I mean, we called out as far back as August that it could be substantial, but it's not going to be like the first one. So I think we see it was bigger than expected. But analyses done showed that the areas least affected in the first one were most affected in the second. So it wasn't at saturation. But, you know, a key point here that England got super hard hit and across two full seasons and kind of straddling two years, they're only at around maybe excess of 13 or 1400 per million, which is 0.13%. And that's the actual real world impact of COVID on mortality. And like it's 0.13%. Uh, this gives the scale of this thing really for people. I think it's important to realize that. And I think that, uh, you know, England uh, having the, the second wave uh, occur in, in the wintertime during flu season without flu is one of the reasons why the actual excess death is, is maybe lower than the reported COVID cases for the second wave, because they include I mean, many of the people who are reported to have died of COVID would have died from flu. So we have this kind of flu displacement factor at play here. Um, yeah. One thing and we don't have is I, I, I don't have the data for the Republic of Ireland um, and, uh, you know, Euromoma I, does have the data and it seems to be a bit worse, I think, for the second wave, right? right. Yeah, we, we have the RIP.ie, which luckily tracks informally and it correlates excellently with the ultimate figures. And I'd say it's similar to Northern Ireland for the first wave at a glance. And the second wave a bit bigger. So maybe the second like the first in, in Republic of Ireland, similar size. But the reality is that Republic of Ireland's epidemic last April 2020, even though there was a hump in excess, the first seven months of the year is no different than prior years compare. And I think it's going to be the same this year. So even though you've got the hump, when you average it out over the year, it's just not going to be much of a signal. So the whole thing, you've got to come back to the same question. With these kinds of 0.1% over two seasons and two years, impacts in mortality and the hospitals never, even though they're not expanded, hitting the capacity, 
you've got to ask, what is this really about <laughs> in some ways? Who's running this show? The point you raise actually is true and seen from these graphs for both England and Northern Ireland in that until week 13, which I believe is the beginning of April, uh, mm. there's actually negative excess death. In other words, this was a, a very, very weak flu season. Uh, and therefore, people who would normally have uh, expired from flu were still alive and therefore frail. So I think we're, we're definitely seeing an effect. This is seen in a number of countries, um, but it's also something which ends up reducing the annual impact. And I think fairly so. 